Um, so hello, uh, I'm Pete Snyder, uh, coming to you live from Florida. And I'm a solutions engineer for, uh, for Efficient IP. I'm one of the new guys to the team um, and, and extremely happy to be here at uh, MFD24. Um, so I'll be providing you with a brief introduction to our GUI environment and uh, showcasing some key features uh, that I believe sets us apart uh, from the rest. Um, as Kirk uh, was closing in on, um, our goal is to enable secure and dynamic communication between users and apps and services. Uh, we achieve this by securing DNS services for protecting users, apps, and data, uh, ensuring you know, service continuity. Uh, we simplify the lifecycle management of DDI resources uh, with our smart automation, cross-platform visibility, and uh, policy control uh, from a single pane of glass. Uh, from the ground up, I think as Kirk mentioned, the EIP DDI solution is, uh, is built on Postgres database, and we have the four pillars of the capabilities that he went over, uh, which are tightly integrated uh, to deliver our DDI solution. Uh, we essentially have three flavors of the platform, a software appliance, uh, which can be installed on a dedicated standard hardware, uh, which EIP will validate um, with its, uh, for compliancy with our solid server image. Uh, you know, of course, we're virtualized. We can run on hypervisor, VMware, or, or Hyper-V instance, um, and we also run in the clouds. And uh, if you require uh, any containerization, you know, such as Docker, uh, we can also support that. So our family of platforms easily scales uh, with your DDI requirements down here. You have your SDS 50, um, you know, clocking in at 500 uh, queries per second, all the way up to the 5570s, which hit 17 million queries per second as, uh, as Kirk was talking about earlier. And the blast is specific to our guardian security services um, and, and that's, a, that's supported by the larger capacity Dell. Uh, so our hardware runs on Dell um, if, you, if you require bare metal and, uh, and you would have to use your equivalent specs if you're doing VM for the blast. So contrary to what uh, my boss's boss said earlier, um, if DDI could be sexy, I think this is it. Um, the solid server appliance suite integrates with uh, it seamlessly with heterogeneous IT environments, providing centralized management of your IPAM, IPv4, IPv6, with multi-vendor network infrastructures, cloud orchestration, um, ITSM tools, DNS, DHCP services for global visibility, uh, comprehensive control and advanced automation, and it ensures policy-driven deployments, so which is going to strengthen your reliability, flexibility, and efficiency um, of your IT critical services or plumbing, as uh, Kirk was alluding to. So here's our global visibility. Um, this slide just is really a teaser. We'll get into the real stuff. So upon logging in to, uh, to Efficient IP, um, you'll get brought into the main dashboard. Um, and you see that there's several more, but uh, just to get some terminology out of the way, up here at our top bar, or we call this our top bar, so we'll have our global search. Uh, there's a little toggle here for real estate to increase your real estate or to keep the tree um, persistent so where you can see where you're at if you choose to navigate this way. Otherwise, you can hover. Uh, down here, there's a folder. So if you want to look at hierarchy, you can do it this way that way. <clears throat> uh, the breadcrumbs is one of our, uh, I would say, bread and butter, just, you know, it, it differentiates us from the rest. Up here is what we'll call our breadcrumbs. And then below here is our listing page. And this is our menu. So this is our menu bar, which has, you know, if you want to add, uh, you have some tools, expert, and it changes for whatever module you're in. So uh, back to the, the sidebar here, we have oops, dashboard. So certain modules come right out of the box without additional licensing. You have your dashboards, of course, uh, the IPAM module, DHCP and DNS. Uh, application, so this is our global server load balancing. Guardian, which is our security product. And then net change 
these three right here require additional licensing. Uh, workflow is basically an internal uh, internal to, to efficient IP. Um, it, it's merely a ticketing system. So if there's any engineers that don't have access to do certain functions, uh, they can create a workflow ticket and that will get escalated to those higher level engineers. Uh, device manager. So if we need to manage via SNMP, uh, you know, gain visibility into the network discovery, that would be that. We understand VLANs, VRFs, and identity manager is the newest uh, feature brought in at, with our 7.3 uh, revision. And this integrates with Active Directory so that it can essentially tie a user to whatever activity is happening uh, within the DDI environment. So from there, we have IPAM and everything is essentially a hierarchy. We have spaces, which is your top level. Then it gets down to networks, uh, your pools, addresses, so on and so forth. And this is really where most of the EIP administrators are going to live. Um, you know, if you look at IP space as your foundation from the ground up, that's how you build it. So resource records are going are gonna to rely on that IPAM. So drilling into these areas. So we have uh, the APIC space, AWS, Azure. So we'll just, we'll start with APIC. So here's what you can automatically see once you start drilling into your IPAM. Um, if you wanna see more, wait, there's more. Uh, we have our listing templates here. So you can select or deselect additional fields. And if you don't wanna have to do this every single time, you can create Uh, so right now we're in the space APIC. So I want to see APIC relevant data and boom. And, and this will be, you know, per user uh, so that they can see exactly what it is they need to see for, for their um, specific environments. <clears throat> so what's also great about this is, you know, going back all to the breadcrumbs, let's just start drilling in. So here we're at all addresses and pools for this particular subnet, which maps to the APIC lab. So you can see, uh, we don't wanna bombard you with too much information at once, so you can expand and, uh, and, and customize it however you need to see it. So let's, uh, let's go into another space here. So you have your space, this, so everything is essentially a hyperlink as well. And it'll take you to, um, you know, to, to those relevant space information. So either the listing page, or if you wanna see properties of our demo environment, um, you can see the main properties, advanced. And if you take a look here, so here's another quick, uh, you know, just eye candy to the administrator to show, um, you know, what, what this feature or how it's set. So this one for IPAM, activate the IPv4. Um, this is a set and propagate. And then you can have set and restrict or propagate and restrict. Um, there's, there's different pokies uh, that will give you indications uh, for your advanced properties, which you can customize um, from your top levels. <clears throat> so going back to the space. We can drill in. Let's just start with uh, site one. And I'll just show you a quick workflow um, API test. So here we have some, some available IP addresses. All you got to do as an administrator, if you want to add it, click OK. We won't give it a class. We'll keep it simple. So here, so here are additional pokies that I was talking about. So we have our mandatory fields you need to uh, have data for. And then here, if you can set or inherit, you can't. So you can lock it down. Uh, so we always want this. So we're, we're not gonna allow the administrator to change their ability to do this. So if we just uh, give it a short, let's see. Go diamond hands, I like that. Give it a MAC address. And what's nice about this is you just keep typing MAC address and it gives you the characters, the colons automatically. 
uh, we could create a DHCP static. So I want to actually have this registered within our DNS. So I'm going to hit set this and I can pick our domain. So let's do it on our NAM intranet. Don't need to mess with any of this, but you can. Next, and let's create a, a C name for this. So everyone, so if there's other services called GME. Boom, now we got diamond hands in there and it's, uh, it's in use. So Kurt was talking, Kirk was talking about our, our smart architecture um, and which you could see from the DHCP and DNS modules. So starting with DNS right here, we call it smartguard.nam.intranet. So this is a smart architecture with our guardian product. Um, up here is just our DNS smart. So basically this is just a logical representation of that environment. And, and these are the servers that are part of this, uh, this uh, logically managed server right here, which has no IP address and just the actual servers will have their IP addresses. Um, the smart architecture uh, for the DNS and DHCP, um, you know, it's gonna offer, you know, significant advantages uh, like reliability, uh, policy enforcement, best practices. Uh, so, you know, you can prevent uh, all the snowflakes that tend to happen when you're managing your, your DDI environment. Uh, so one of my favorite features, if not my favorite feature, is actually being able to do a global search anywhere um, in the environment to, to pull anything you need. You don't have to be context or uh, a syntax specific. So if I just need to find an IP address, see what's going on. So if someone calls me up, says, hey, 10.230.0.100, they're doing funny stuff. Who are they? We can automatically pull up the network that they're part of, the pool, IP address, scope, range. There's a ton of information that can be garnered from just uh, doing this search. So I'm kind of curious. So there, we can pull some information on diamond hands. Are there any questions so far? Can you search by the MAC address? One, 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 one. That's a good question. Let's do it. One more. Yep. Thanks. Or if you need to get, you know, so we, you know, this is our demo environment. Why search for tests? We have tons of information on test, everything. So even PTRs, A records, all the DNS registrations. Now, Pete, are, are the search results there, are those uh, hyperlinks that can get you into the, the, um, the, the particular uh, uh, UI to get more information, yes. more detailed information? That's a great question. So here we have, uh, if you wanna navigate to the properties of Jim test, that will take you there. So here it takes you to that information for our properties page. Uh, if you want to see, um, and then just hitting this as a toggle to expand the data that comes with it. So you go to the properties and uh, if you need to edit it straight away, you go ahead and go through the wizard to do that. Uh, going back to the dashboard, um, some things I wanted to show you. Um, I didn't really go into the dashboard. So when you log in, this is what you're going to see. It's a, this one um, I set um, you know, for my environment, for things that I want to see on my main dashboard. Um, this, I love. Who, you know, network engineers, when you got to do PCAPs um, to prove, you know, your innocence, uh, this is an easy way to do it. So automatically, hey, someone calls me up, I log in. Okay, I'm just going to do a PCAP because, you know, we all know packets don't lie. Um, and then you can see your DNS servers and your smart architecture. And then there's, you know, uh, the system dashboard, IPAM, all of this um, that you can easily navigate to. And then quick searches, if you don't want to use this, this one, then you can uh, search here for address and prefix and then get all sorts of information. So when you're in IPAM, 
go back to all the spaces. So these are persistent too. So if you if you go to another uh, module section and you need to go back to IPAM, it'll take you back to where you were. Um, let's see, going into AWS. Let's change that. AWS Cloud. Now we can see some more relevant information, right? We got we got our, our regions for the VPCs um, and also VPC ID and uh, availability zones. Yeah, you get a lot more information. And what's if this isn't enough, you can track it with more metadata. So there's a, I think one of the providers I heard about tracks roughly 300 different data points uh, per, uh, per network IP address. So all you'd have to do is, is drag this in and then customize it for what you need. Um, and, and that will be part of that record. Uh, if you need to do reports, add alerts, um, your export. So CSV, HTML, um, you know, you can, you can automate these, schedule them or uh, pull them live. Um, and then here are the alerts. So if I want to have this um, added to my, uh, my main dashboard, I could go ahead and, and add these and then, or you could do, so if you want to add a chart. Then you can, uh, you know, say where you want it to be, and uh, you know what parameters you need to see. So can you just can you query all this information via API. Yes, the, that was going to be my last point. Um, everything that you can do in the GUI is available via API as well. So that is an extremely powerful, uh, you know, capability, especially for teams that are fully automated. Uh, if uh, you know, I know in the in the retail environments and in, in the cruise industry, um, you need to get a lot of information uh, to so that you can en enhance the you know your guest or your customer's user experience with whatever it is. And uh, I think a lot of people lose sight of what you can actually do with the network. And uh, and this this DDI environment is exactly what it is. Now, is that is the documentation for the API calls embedded in the, this interface, or is it set? Okay, there it is. Cool. Right here. Yep. So you just navigate it this way. Um, so if you need to pull, really just a PHP listing, but you know if you want to see your DNS views, um, yeah, you can uh, you can quickly reference this and, and build out your API library for your workflows. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, Pete. Just, just for clarity here, can you, if you go back here, so what we're looking at here is integration with AWS, right? So am I, are, yes. are you saying that the, from an integration perspective that I can manage all my AWS Route 53 records from your solution um, and also that applies to Azure, different things? What about Cloudflare? Are, do you guys integrate with Cloudflare, things like that? I, I would say yes, but I would need to double check that um, just okay. simply from the perspective of the API. It's got an API we can we can integrate with it. So, uh, but having specific plugins for Cloudflare, I'd have to I'd have to take a look at that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just thinking. You know, there, there there's a couple of use cases I've seen in the past where this integration is pretty powerful, right? Having that integration with AWS, to, especially from orchestration. So I'm very, I'm curious when you guys do a demo, are you going to show some of that possibly as part of your Terraform and all the automated portions of that? Yeah, so Bob has the real fun stuff, uh, which he'll be coming up after me. Uh, I, I, I want to jump in on a few on these while we're showing it. So what he has up here now is the listings pages, right? And, and it's how I show the database. And when he had spaces in there, it's how we partitioned the database. So a space is the highest hierarchy. And I can have completely overlapping subnets in there. I can have complete, they're completely independent of each other, even though they're running on the same database. So where this comes into play is um, companies that do acquisitions and spin-offs, right? They can spin up a space, completely add it in. When it's time to merge it in, um, consolidate the data, and then take it apart and spin it back out when they want to get rid of those resources. Um, 
The other thing, so these are the properties pages. This is how we sort the databases within the um, um, white blocks up there. I can do sorts and I can do um, multiple statements as far as how I want to show this data. So there we go. And then just hit where it says contains. So greater than, equal to, less than, newer than, all kinds of things like that. So I can sort the data and then use these filters and then from here, create reports. So I can, it's extremely customizable as far as what people want to keep track of. You can create reports that are in that are important to that specific user. And of course, we take into account the permissions as far as what they're allowed to see, which we'll talk about next. Then the other one, um, let's go to a DNS server and look at a properties page. This is where you do all of the configurations. Okay, so instead of having to dig through 14 different places, and when he did the search, he kind of jumped into where the properties page was. Um, this is where you do all the configurations from one simple, easy location. Okay, so um, you're able to, instead of having to go through hidden menus and all of those kind of things, you can jump right into the wizards. All of the metadata that he was showing can then become part of the um, installation wizards as well too. All of those kind of things. So um, as far as the properties pages go, that's where all the configuration work is done. And as far as the listings pages, that's where we're showing um, the database and how it's laid out and what are the different attributes inside of it, where you do the creations, all of those kind of things. Now, within each of these, right, at any entity that you drill into, whether it's a network or a zone or a server or anything like that, there's the access control, which is about halfway down on the left-hand side. What this is, is it ties it to groups. If the, if the group is in here, you're allowed to see it. And these are all the permissions that they're allowed to do to it. So as Kirk mentioned earlier, um, we're very big in the university space. And this is a big reason why, right? A university is made up of multiple colleges. Multiple colleges like to act independently. So you give access to their networks and their DNS servers and all of those kind of things specific for them. But everything is still kept under one, um, one data, IPAM database that's keeping track of everything. And then the other part on here that's really slick is that um, a little bit farther down, there's an audit log of every person that's come in and made changes and what they've done, it's all kept and tracked inside of these properties pages, along with very detailed logs that are sitting off um, on the site as well too. Yeah, I noticed you're running bind. Do you guys just run vanilla bind or do you guys like optimize it for, for your purposes? It, it, it's the, the bind itself. It's optimized. As far as um, we're running the bind engine primarily, we're also running unbound when it comes to recursion. So if something happens to the bind process, it'll automatically cut over, or you can do that manually. For authoritative servers, we're running NSD as well too. So yeah, um, you can configure, and, and I do have customers that have configured this so that um, if the bind process gets destroyed for some reason, that um, things still stay up and running at just fine. And, and, and I'll talk a little bit later about how we make that happen. Okay, cool. Thank you. Everything we've done here, every move, every jump has been an API call to the operating system, right? It's free BSD, it's, newer, um, it, it's accessible. But, I, um, but it's very secure as far as having um, an internal stateful firewall. So everything that he's done has been a, an API call to the, uh, the FreeBSD. And what happens then is that since all of our developers are using it all the time, um, the error messages that you get as far as API errors 
are very readable and understandable. We have a large customer in the Midwest that um, one of their biggest decision criteria was that they didn't want their ServiceNow team to be the DDI team's biggest customer. So when you're able to, to see the error messages, decrypt them, all of those kind of things without having to escalate and send emails, it, it makes it a lot better. Hey, Bob or, Bob or Pete, um, again, if you're going to cover this in your demo, um, do you guys support tagging or any sort of like parameterized thing that I could use from a like a programmatic perspective where I'm passing parameters to the API where I can determine, hey, I need to go to this DNS server, this subnet, et cetera, et cetera, and do this registration? I see Bob smiling, so that must be a yes or he's <laughs> yeah. going to cover it. Yes. No, um, it, and, and it's handled here in the metadata, right? Um, okay. We, we still don't, we're, we're not using the term tags. I know some of the other okay. guys do, um, but any, you can do API calls ba even based on what's in the metadata. And then as far as in the administration portion, you can build a customized database inside of this specifically for what applications that you want to run. The one that jumps to mind the most is our ClearPass integration. And again, I think it comes a lot from the university space where we make API or we make calls to um, ClearPass. ClearPass gives us the blessing to allow that MAC address into the network. And, and on those, you can pass whatever kind of parameters between the two that you want to pass.